Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today, I'm gonna to be covering the best beginner cameras you can buy in 2023. And I'm gonna give you a beautiful, nice little structured price range. Everything's gonna be covered in today's video. Class this as the full beginner's camera buying guide, if you'd like. So yes, that is exactly what we're gonna be covering today. And just before we do dive into today's video, I have just launched my full brand new beginner's guide to consistently taking good photos course over on my website. So you can go and check that out if you haven't already enrolled in the description down below. I would love to get your thoughts, feedback, and opinion on that. And if you do want to check it out, please go ahead and enroll. I would love to see you over there in the course. So without further ado, and with that now out of the way, let's dive into today's video. All right, so first things first, I want to get some things out of the way. When we're talking about beginner photography equipment, I'm not gonna be sitting here saying, well, just spend two and a half, three thousand dollars on a beautiful brand new Canon R5, and this is gonna be the best camera for you. It's gonna teach you everything you need to know, and you'll never have to upgrade. Absolutely not. That is definitely not the idea of a beginner camera. In my opinion, the beginner camera has to tick a few boxes. One, it has to be affordable. It doesn't matter how much money you have when you're starting out. It just If you're just gonna go and spend you know, three or $4,000 on a full camera setup when you're just getting into anything, it's probably not the best financial move. You don't know whether you're gonna fall in love with it or gonna hate it in a month. So be smart, buy something small, buy something you know used and old, and then get that out of the way. Learn everything you can from it, take what you can, move on, and if you do fall in love with it, then go ahead and upgrade after that. Then also, it has to be beginner friendly. So you don't wanna be going out and buying this crazy camera that you have no idea how to use, and then you just get overwhelmed, and then you just give up, and you're not into photography anymore. So it has to be accessible, and it has to be beginner friendly. And with those two out of the way, let's dive in to camera number one. All right, so camera number one may not be exactly what you're expecting, but to be honest with you, it's the camera we always have on us, and that is our phone. Now, I know this sounds a little silly, but hear me out. If you're going out shooting photos with your phone for maybe a week, two weeks, a month, whatever the case, and you're loving it, chances are it's gonna be time to upgrade to a camera. But don't go out and buy a camera for two, three, four hundred dollars and get invested already and then you can find out whether you like it. It's the same kind of principle as to why you don't wanna go out and buy a $5,000 camera right now. Go and shoot with your phone, go and start playing around. It's the most accessible camera to us all and we all know how to use it. And of course, to be honest with you, I shoot photos with my phone all the time. If I'm out and about anywhere and I just don't have my camera with me, obviously I'm not just gonna let the moment pass. I'm gonna take the photo on my phone and no, I'm probably not gonna deliver it to a client and I'm probably not gonna upload it to my Instagram, but it's gonna make the story and I'll always have the memory with me. So use your phone in the beginning and don't be silly to go and spend a load of cash on a camera. Find out whether you actually like the art of photography first. All right, so now we've got the phone out of the way. Let's talk about an old entry level camera. And when I mean old, I mean a used entry level camera, something that's between maybe 10 to five years old, sort of in that range. And this is going to be ideal for most photographers watching this video. Now, the camera that I'm going to recommend here, well, it's actually two. You've either got the 6 or the 700D from Canon. The 600D was the camera that I started with when I first got into photography, and I absolutely love it. It's going to teach you everything you need to know. It's super basic and super simple, yet the images that are coming out of this camera are gorgeous. It's got an 18 megapixel sensor. The autofocus is somewhat average, but that's fine. You don't need crazy autofocus at this point. The lenses you can buy for this camera are absolutely stunning. And the thing is, they're so much cheaper now because instead of buying the new RF glass, you're buying the old EF glass, which you can find used for an absolute bargain. Now, the difference between the 6 and the 700D isn't great. You're pretty much gonna see no image quality difference coming out of these cameras, but there are a few changes to the body and a few upgrades on the 700D that you wouldn't find on the 600D. So if you are really budget limited, go the 600D, or if you're not gonna stick around on this camera for long, go the 600D, but if you are looking for a little bit more of a long-term entry-level camera, go the 700D and you'll thank me later. Now, if you've got a little bit more cash to splash, I would recommend going for the Canon R10. Actually, give me one sec. Let me see if I can find one. All right, so believe it or not, um, I don't just have a strange uh, camera shop in my house. Uh, this is actually my partner's camera, and she is more or less getting into photography, getting into videography, all these kinds of things, and she is loving that. And she took my advice, and she bought the Canon R10. This little guy here 
is amazing. If you are looking at shooting video at all, definitely don't get the 6 or 700D. I'm only recommending these cameras for photographers, but this camera can shoot really nice 4K video, so keep that in mind. But when we are talking about photography, this camera is great. It's got the new RF lenses, so of course they are gonna be more expensive, but they are also going to be better. You're gonna be spending more money, but you're gonna be getting more for your money. So I guess that's something to consider as well. You've got a beautiful flip out LCD screen, which is also touch, which is something that the 600D does not have. This body is also far smaller and far lighter, so definitely keep these things in mind. But this camera is definitely for the person that has a little bit more money to spend, is definitely gonna hang on to their camera for a little bit longer, or and or want something new because you're not gonna find this camera used anywhere, or sure you might, but there's no point in buying one as you might, buy, might as well buy it brand new. You're gonna get the warranty and all these other kind of goodness all these other good things with it as well. So keep that in mind. This camera is great if you want a brand new entry-level camera. In my opinion, the Canon R10 is where it's at. Okay, so let's say you've been on an entry-level camera for just a little while now and you're looking to upgrade. Well, what can you upgrade to? Well, here are two more recommendations for an old and a new version of some upgrades that you can upgrade to. The first one is gonna be the Canon 6D. I love this camera. I also use this camera as well, and I know that's a bit of a theme in this video, but believe me, I'm only gonna wanna tell you what I have used and what I have experience with, otherwise I'm gonna be recommending cameras that I have no idea about. Now the Canon 6D is great once again because it has the EF lens mount, so you're gonna be able to save a whole load of money over there, and you'll be able to take the lenses you took from your Canon 600 or 700D and put them on the Canon 60, which is just beautiful. It's uh, nice when things work out, right? The Canon Canon 6D is also a step up in a few ways. It's got a slightly higher megapixel count, but it has a full frame sensor instead of an APS-C size sensor. This means you're gonna be getting a larger field of view. Your depth of field is gonna be far bigger, if that makes sense. You're gonna have more background blur, which is crazy. You're gonna have better low light performance, and overall your images, in my opinion, when you're shooting on a full frame camera, just look that much better. The Canon 6D is also gonna have better battery life, so in general, you're getting a far better camera. The only place that it drops the ball is that it doesn't have a flip out screen and the screen is just fixed to the back of the camera. But you can find the Canon 6D fairly cheap as they were released, I think in maybe like 2010 or 2011. So they are quite old, but believe me, the photos you're gonna be getting out of this camera are absolutely gorgeous. Keep in mind though, that this camera pretty much has zero video functionality. Sure, you can shoot video on it, but believe me, it's not good whatsoever. So keep that in mind. This is definitely a photography first and a photography only camera. All right, and now we're gonna move into the new mid-range cameras and these cameras I'll be honest with you, I know I just said I'm recommending cameras that I've used in the past, but to be honest with you, I just haven't used this camera purely for the fact that it's genuinely brand new and I have no need or reason to buy it. But after looking at the spec sheet and using pretty much all the other cameras that Canon has to offer, the Canon R8, in my opinion, is where it's at. You get the full frame sensor, just like the 6D, but this is a much better sensor. It's a 24 megapixel sensor. It's gonna do really well in low light and it's gonna look incredible. You also get a bigger body than the uh, Canon R10 and you also get the upgraded body versus the Canon 6D. You are gonna be back on the RF lens mount. So this is a good and a bad thing. Once again, you're gonna be spending more money on lenses, but just keep this in mind. Of course, it's gonna be a more expensive body as well because it genuinely has just launched. Of course, depending on when you've watched this video, but. Either way, it's gonna be a much newer camera than the Canon 6D will ever be. With this being said, this definitely is a camera that you can shoot really nice video on, so also make sure you keep that in mind. And in my opinion, the Canon R8 is an absolute sleeper of a camera, especially in 2023. So with that being said, guys, that is pretty much gonna wrap up my full buyer's guide for a beginner photographer in 2023. We've gone all the way from the range of about, let's say 300 to $400 on that really budget side with the six to 700D all the way up up to the Canon R8, which is at about $2,000. Anywhere in that range, you should be able to find something. In my opinion, I really like the R10 and the Canon 600D. That's where I'd be at right now. And uh, yeah, more or less, that's pretty much it, guys. So I hope you've been able to learn something from today's video. If you're new around here, a subscribe would mean the absolute world. And guys, as always, I will catch you in the next one. Peace.